you have our presentation? I do. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a PDF. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll pull it up and then you can click to it. Okay. If you'd like, or I can, whatever you'd like. I'll do it. It was just a mouse code. Yeah, it's just a mouse code. Mm -hmm. A little bit different. I was at a Canby Monday. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, coin was there, KTU was there oh. uh, for pulling those books. I told you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't okay. tune into the meeting, but I heard about it the day after. <laughs> was it just recently? Um, Monday. Monday. Monday yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Contentious. Controversial topic. Yeah. 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 I thought everyone was excited about our bond program, but no. I was excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks real nice. My girlfriend and I walk around the campus. Oh, nice, nice. You know, we go yeah. for walks, and wow, it's so so changed and yeah. so nice. We're really proud of what we're able to do. Yeah. And I went to the bookstore and picked up a book with my daughter-in-law. Oh. She's going to start some classes. Oh, so, nice. Oh, that's exciting. That's always yeah. good to hear. Oh, they got a little sunshine out there. Yeah, it feels good. My car was warm when I got in. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> Man, <laughs> come to a meeting when it's daylight, sun shining. All we need now is a little warmth to yeah, get there. It's like the good old days. <laughs> Doing well. How are you? Good. You didn't take the good check. Good check. <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot of signals. Oh yeah. <laughs> first come first. Oh. I do it in a box. Hi, Bob. Oh, I'll wait and wait. I are okay. Okay, excellent. Be good. Yeah, good. 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 It's about five, ten minutes, not too much. Excellent. That's I mean, better. Yeah, better. That's better. Yeah, but you once you come, you have to see it. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call my wife right now. This, this is meeting number three. Oh boy. How long have you been on the board? I'm not on the board. I'm on staff. Oh, okay. I'm the facilities manager. Oh, okay. Director of facilities. Yeah. Oh, this group out. It's like a lot. Hi, guys. Hey. Are these the official East Coast sweatshirts? 
They yes. are. Have you gotten that? I've not seen them. No. Yeah, the back's really cool. Cool. You guys had a miserable time? It's all you. I'm going to computer too. I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up. Yeah. yeah. Stepping up in the world. Yeah. You know the drill, right? Yeah. Because you were here once before. February. February. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Month less. Yeah. Sam had to work today, so I'm coming for her. Okay. Good plan. Next slide. Good. Almost done. <laughs> I'm next year. What's next year? I'm going to Shemekeda and do five signs, and then pick up the five That's right. Yeah. Is that a two year program? It's like 18 months. 18 months. Non stop. Do they help facilitate contacts with fire bureaus? Yeah. So, what I'm going to do, the program I'm doing is it's a slow I stay at the fire house and I sit there and then work there. I'll go to classes, play soccer, play school, and then in the class, work, get hours, get experience. And then when I'm done, I change because of experience I'll have, I can get any job at any station I want. Well, that's a cool deal. I just have to get accepted. Where would you where would you like to get a shot? Uh Columbus County if I Okay, so you'd like to be oh, oh. yeah. How far away would you go? Yeah, anyway. yeah it doesn't bother me. Yeah. 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 You'll always hit a bump. There will always be a bump. But yes. so you have to be able to Okay. Give up on your dream. Yeah. You'll hit a bump. Guaranteed. I've already hit a bump. I've already more. been hitting them. You'll hit more. Yes, I know. And what you have to have is right over the top of the bump. Fun goal. Okay. But right, um, all high school seniors get out into their next chapter of life. That it never goes. I'm just like you've had it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're on your own now. I don't know. But you have to tell us. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 So now I read and I have to Yeah, you're right. This is the same. Same. All right. All the hills. Oh, here. Sitting there. Oh, okay. Not so much buildings. Just a few. Did it say you have a city? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. What's up, Sam? Half hour? Yeah. I want to go directly. It's right after me. Are you the prisoner? Are you the second? I'm the only one. You're third. You're number three on the list. Now, you're basically number two. You like what you're happening. Well, there's this right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 
Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so change the presence of the hard drive. So I remember I live in Yeah, that's the one I mean. There was a point and then I have to run it. Right? What a small world. I know. for you, man. Yeah, under the two right right? Yeah, All right, we'll get started. Mr. I did not think you know that she was a star. Okay, right there. Is this on the Natural walls. Textbook adoption. So we'll put that in just our first reading. So what spot will that go to? In the you could do it right right after class. Class, okay. Mm -hmm. Under discussion. And, and did you have uh, the calendar framework, which was listed as action items six H, which should actually be just a discussion item. Okay. Six H. So we're going to move that also. Well, so we'll move that to four C. Yes. All right. Any other 
that changes are to our agenda. Great. Can we approve our agenda? Can I get a motion to approve our agenda? Make a motion to approve the amended agenda. Second. Ginger, yes. Yes. Stacy, yes. 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 Now we have our information from our student representative. So we have Sam with us. Sam, no. Marcus. Marcus, it changed. Yes. Sorry. Yes, Sam had a Sam had Okay. Well, thanks for taking over for us now. Tell us about what's going on at the high school. Um, so this Friday is the opening day for the musical, doing Beauty and the Beast. And then we have prom, and not this upcoming Saturday, but next Saturday, the 22nd. Um, out of starting, like right now, is a track meet that's home. And then the talent show audition start next week, and then the talent show is May 12th. And then as of right now, baseball is 8-0 and, and undefeated. Oh, wow. Whoa. Tell me a little more about the talent show because I didn't hear anything about it for a while. <laughs> um, I've not fully been out yet. Okay. Think we're still like planning it, but for Unity Week, it's the week of the 12th in May. And then on that Friday, we have a talent show and then we have auditions that we're setting up for it next week. And Unity Week is the whole week of the. Yeah, it's like a spirit week in homecoming. Yeah. Okay. Is that new? Is Unity Week new, or was it just, or is it just renamed? It's all, we had it for a couple of years. It went away during COVID, and then okay. we brought it back last year. Okay. So, Marcus, what grade are you? Senior. Okay. What are you gonna do in the fall? Are you going to school? Starting working? Make some money? Um, I'm going to Chemeketa in Salem, and yeah. I'm gonna play soccer for them, but then also get my fire science, and I'm gonna stay at a fire station work for the fire station and then become a firefighter after that. Oh, we were just talking about that at our joint city council meeting about the opportunities with the fire department. That's really cool. That's great. Have you been about Blackstone, like your whole school? Yeah. So it's like kindergarten. I've been in the same house my whole life. Really? Yes. So are you going to live in Salem then? Or yeah, I'm going to try. If I signed up for the program and then I finally get accepted in June. Okay. But I'm going to stay at a fire station if I get accepted and then work for them. Excited to move out of the house. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be next one. I love it. That's awesome. Any other questions? Thanks, Marcus. He was with us in February. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you. You are welcome to stay, but you don't have to if you have homework. Or <laughs> want to go to the track meet. <laughs> I'll stay. I'll stay for this. No, <laughs> good for your awesome. <laughs> All right. So next on our agenda is the recognition, and we have the students and staff from our East Coast trip. So come on up. I love the sweatshirts too. <laughs> yeah, center. Yeah. Yep. Wait, show the back of you. Yeah, so you gotta see. <laughs> right. So um, my name is Vicki Baker, and Tobin Nelson and Stephanie Bell. We were um, chaperones and coordinators of the trip, and I brought some students in to talk about their experience, but I just need to say thank you to the board for approving this trip after our COVID break, um, and also just to let you all know how fabulous Gladstone students are, especially um, when we were traveling, and it kind of got to be the joke among the chaperones, like we'd show up at the bus and say, got another compliment. <laughs> And then the kids were chiming in, Ms. Baker, we got another compliment, you know, like everywhere we went, our kids were commended for their behavior, their manners, everything. And so much so that our last night, the uh, tour guide was very reluctant to do a tour with high school kids. And the very next day on her podcast, publicly praised our <laughs> high school students on their behavior, their engagement, um, which is what we had seen for two weeks. So with that, you guys get to talk about the trip. Can you start by introducing yourselves? Uh, I'm Ned Burns. I'm a senior at Glasgow. Uh, I'm Zach. I'm also a senior. I'm Marley. I'm a senior. <laughs> um, some highlights from my trip would be uh, D.C. We got to see a lot of interesting historical sites, and we got to sit in the Senate Gallery while Senate was taking place, and that was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed all the museums we went to, especially the African-American History Museum. 
Um, the Amish country tour was incredible. We got to learn about quilting, which I found really interesting. Um, yeah, I just really liked that there was a good mix of like culture and just knowledge, you know, like getting to ride on the New York subway was cool. Uh, and so was getting to see like the American Revolution Museum and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite parts of the trip, definitely, I think Washington, D.C. Um, I loved all the history there, but it was also like I could see myself living there. It was a nice place. Um, I also very much enjoyed Amish country. You've never had food until you've had Amish food. It is the most delicious mm -hmm. thing ever. I've been raving about it ever since I came back. Um, and then I'd say New York was definitely a highlight. Um, going to a Knicks game was amazing. Um, just the energy that night was amazing. And then seeing two Broadway shows, I felt very lucky to do. Um, they were both perfect. Was awesome. yeah. We saw Chicago and Hamilton. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my highlight was probably Colonial Williamsburg. Um, mm -hmm. It's like this old town uh, in Virginia. Is it Virginia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and there's like a mix of, so there's people living there, working, um, doing the trades that, and uh, like the same type of style of the trades that they were doing back then. So they're still doing them today, bringing them back. Um, and yeah, people are living in this little town um, and like some of the original buildings are still there. Uh, so yeah, I like that. And then probably uh, Philly was my second favorite. Um, Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> what did you choose? I like Gino's. You like this yeah. as he shot um, the window. <laughs> and then obviously New York uh, plays Knicks game. Oh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> what? Oh. I, you know, you've been East Coast before, mm -hmm. but have you guys? No. You know, what was the thing that surprised you the most, or thought like something you didn't think you wanted to do, but then like was like that was the highlight. I I keep hearing Amish, and I know when my daughter went, it was like they loved Amish country. Yeah, it was cool. like, yeah, I, I liked how calm the Amish country was for sure. It was nice to just get to, I don't know, be we weren't completely detached from like electricity or anything like that, but it was just a little bit more slow pace, and I really liked that. Yeah. Food was incredible, like Marley said. Yeah, it was a little. It was a nice break before New York, but I would say, um. Yeah, something that surprised me was how much I enjoyed like a lot of the museums. Like I I was looking forward to some of the museums, but um, one that surprised me was the American Revolution Museum or the museum, the Civil War Museum in Gettysburg. Yeah. What about, sorry, I'm gonna ask another one because I'm teaching history this year. When you were on the Senate floor, was it, did you find it like interesting or? Like, you didn't know what they were doing, and so you weren't quite sure, or what, like? Um, I did. I found it very interesting. I mean, I didn't really know exactly what they were doing, but watching them, people talk, uh, and then some people, they were doing a vote, and some people just came in, said yes or no, and then had to leave because you have to be on the floor to vote, and so they would just come in and leave right away, and I thought that was interesting versus, like, staying there talking a little bit. They just left right away. Now, did you guys hear them talking about the TikTok? Thing. yeah yes I didn't but some people did yeah. yeah like when I came in it was like right at the end of the presentation and then yeah in what uh, museum you were seeing the revolutionary war museum was your favorite no the holocaust museum was my favorite but I was surprised that I enjoyed the American Revolution Museum I really like the African American History Museum I just thought there was like a lot of cool pop culture stuff too <laughs> 9-11. Um, the size of that museum is very um, eye-opening. Uh, all the artifacts that have is staying in that. Well, I remember from looking at it and then hearing you talk, I'm reminded of like your itinerary. It's incredible mm -hmm. that you get to do. Also really packed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so like it probably, you know, I'm like, how did you feel about the itinerary? It sounds like, I mean, you had amazing things you loved, but was it too much? Was it just enough? Was it, what would be your recommendation? I would say going into it, I was definitely intimidated, especially by like the hours we had to wake up. <laughs> I was not looking forward to waking up at 515. But when you're on the trip, it was, you do so much. So when you get back to the hotel, you're just, you're out, <laughs> you fall asleep. And then you wake up the next day and you're super excited for the jam-packed itinerary of things to do 
Um, so I think, I think it was great. I think even though it was a lot, it just, it was amazing seeing so many different things. And if we didn't have it as packed, um, I mean, I know I wouldn't want to miss anything. So I feel like it was necessary and great. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say so. Very packed, but very worth it. You know, it was super well planned too. Everything just like fit together like incredibly well. Yeah, some days were more like uh, packed, doing more stuff than others. But and then, then some other days it was kind of more chill, had more time to lay down and get them out. So it was a good mix. Uh, and the weather was good. It was good. It was great. Yeah, cold, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> a little bit mixed, but no snow, no rain, no. Gonna get well, some rain, yeah. Country <laughs> like last time. <laughs> A little bit stormy in Amish country. What is, that, yeah. what is the weirdest thing you saw? <laughs> I always ask the, 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 the most fun, the worst, and the weirdest. Uh, <laughs> I said lots of things you love. So I think something weird to me was in New York, they just had trash everywhere. <laughs> just like, well, these just like trash bags on every street corner and everything. And I was very confused by that. So that was different to me. <laughs> Um, I would say in Amish yeah. country, some houses had solar panels, like Amish houses had solar panels, which I didn't really like, I don't understand Amish that much, but um, <laughs> like, I don't know, I just, it seemed weird to me that like, they have energy, electricity. Uh, I guess, I don't know, kind of on the spot, but the first thing that comes to mind is that like, there was so much so many security measures going into the Senate floor. And then you could just see like the door holders of the sound guy, like scrolling through Facebook. <laughs> and that was kind yeah. of ironic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Do you want to hear it? Um, that is day two or like day three, I guess, on the trip in Williamsburg. Day one was at Monticello and we were all so exhausted <laughs> from having no sleep on an airplane the night before. But when we got to Monticello, at least I was I was pleasantly surprised because Thomas Jefferson, he had a weird house, <laughs> but it was great to see. Um, He... There were so many different, like, there were lots of colors. He was a very, like, scientific guy. So he made his house, like, so he would have the most dopamine possible. So he made it so, like, there was lots of sun or extremely bright rooms. And it just, it was an interesting house. <laughs> this Williams where, like, Neb was talking about, like, there was just a lot of old historical buildings and a lot of people doing old historical trades and a lot of reconstruction was going on as well of old houses that were in the places that we see now and they were using the original building techniques so actually like hand smithing nails to go into the houses it's incredible dc um that is the african-american museum on the left uh that place was crazy there was like three or four floors um all of the history that you could think of was in there. Uh, very, like, entertaining almost. Uh, lots of videos and stuff that you could see. Yeah, it was really cool. And the building, how it's made is you work your way up. And so you start at the bottom with um, slavery and everything. And you go up to, like, civil rights. And you keep going up floors up to now. That shows Black excellence in such as like the media or like films, movies, music, um, science. I'm forgetting another sports. sports. Yeah. And that was, I, I liked how they structured that. Has that been around for a while? I'm 2018 sure. was the first year that it was available to us on a tour. Okay. Wow. Was what has explored you expected or bigger or smaller? I, I hear smaller. Say smaller yeah. Than expect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So huge. Oh, this is Burn in Hand, Pennsylvania. Every time we saw a buggy, we all would like yeah. stick our heads in the window. Be like, oh my gosh, there's a horse, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's a whoopie pie. Yeah, that's a whoopie pie. I didn't try one personally, but all the food there was amazing. If 
I had a like if I could just spend another day there, <laughs> I would gain like at least 30 pounds. <laughs> um, oh, and we saw like the stores that we went to had like little like I don't petting zoo type things at the back. And another weird thing we saw there, I saw a peacock at one of them. And I was not expecting to see a peacock in Amish country. So that was interesting. Philly, um, Gino is on the right. Uh, my personal favorite. Like right <laughs> um, the best. best food. Uh, Liberty Bell in the middle. And what's that building? Uh, Love free Freedom uh, Hall. Freedom Hall. Right. Is that what it is? <laughs> Independence Hall. Independence Hall. Um, yeah, Gino's was my favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you also went to Reading Terminal Market. Uh, oh, that, that was, was insane. Good. Yeah. That was so, so many crazy. shops packed in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So many people. <laughs> while, you, while you were there? No. Uh, no, I got a cannoli in Boston. Uh, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. That market in Philly is incredible. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, wait, did you do one? I don't know. Uh, I have not yeah. done like a whole one yet. Boston was really interesting um, because we got to see that big cemetery. What was that one called again? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, a little bit of Liberty Trail, uh, Independence Trail, sorry. Uh, Freedom Trail. It was a little bit brief, our time in Boston, so I'm having some trouble remembering it, but it was a really good time. We went to Harvard. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be a separate slide, but that was an incredible time. Just such a nice little community. Um, and I had a cannoli there. <laughs> and NYC that was we did so much there it was amazing I loved it um Statue of Liberty it was very cold on the ferry and I should have dressed warmer but that's okay common theme <laughs> on the trip um the um middle one is the Brooklyn Bridge I I enjoyed my time on the bridge. A lot of people were afraid of heights. And so walking uh, a mile on these wobbly boards isn't ideal if you're afraid of heights, but I thought I thought it was great. I heard um, Empire State of Mind more times on that bridge than I, think I ever will in my life. <laughs> um, and then the right photo, that is a 9-11 memorial. Um, it was just... The 9-11 museum was very emotional. Um, and it yeah, so that was a rough day, but necessary. Yeah, I don't know if the, about the flowers. Oh, the flowers. I saw a white flower on one of the names. And if there's a white flower on one of the names, that means it was that person's birthday. And so that yeah, rough morning, but <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it so. <laughs> I'd like to give a major shout out to the chaperones. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you had the energy to do this. And uh, Mrs. Baker, your your trip planning is another level. I mean, it it blew me away. Um, every detail that you gave to the parents, um, that passport that you gave us. My in-laws were visiting, they are world travelers, they have very standards, and they could not stop talking about how amazing <laughs> they were by your planning skills and your abilities, and every minute, every detail was recorded, and I cannot thank you guys, all of you, enough, um, and you are a gift to our district, so thank you so much for what you've given thank our children. Thank, thank you. you. It's seeing these guys' as enthusiasm and the 43 other kids' as enthusiasm yeah. is why we do it. So, and now they can go anywhere in the world and ride the subway. So they know how yeah. To <laughs> and I thank you for telling us about the um, what was it, was it the Salem witch tour that yeah. they, mm -hmm. they were hesitant to have it. Yeah. They actually on the on the podcast they one of the guys was saying, "Oh, public school at its finest," and the the tour guide said, "Oh no, that was not a public school." <laughs> directed her just you know <laughs> but yeah that was well, amazing incredible. Yeah, yeah i Definitely. as a musical theater nerd from sixth grade i i was so stoked to see it and seeing it 
I for the second time in person was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah. Thank you all for approving yeah, the trip. That so was much. yeah. <laughs> Guys, we'll be so glad to get to yeah. yeah. the opportunity. It's, it's an yeah. incredible opportunity you got to, yeah. you know, yeah. to do thanks yeah. to our amazing staff here. And <laughs> thanks for coming and sharing it with us. What are you guys doing? Are you, you're all involved. I'm going to know what you're doing. So I'm going into trades. Um, I'm doing tile work for a company in Portland. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Oregon State. And doing business administration with their honors college. I'm also going to Oregon State, their honors college, and I'm studying psychology. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you our other recognition is we have some art from John Wetton here. Um, but did we have any description or anything? Well, the first thing I notice, I see the little I am um, things over here. I think that is adorable. I want to steal that idea <laughs> and share it. Um, it looks like we have, I see on this one, it talks about strategies for coping with feelings instead of bottling them up. So they did some writing and some painting. World of the line drawing. I see someone replacing the name. <laughs> Favorite words. That's cute. really cute. Practicing with some expressive words. Sardine is a good word. Sardine. Sardine is a good word. That's a good word. That's a good Learning <laughs> <laughs> some really great vocabulary. Love the what are those polar bears? Are they groundhogs? Groundhog Groundhog day. Day. Get the little baby groundhogs there. <laughs> and then we have musical instruments over on the far far corner. Some perspective drawings. <laughs> All right, great job, John students. Okay, moving on to discussion reports. So our first one is Clackamas Community College presentation. Hi. Um, I guess it's evening, right? I was gonna yeah. say good evening, right? I can't tell. Yeah. We're happy the sun is out, even though Ten minutes, right? we can't get it used to be 60, right? Well, Thank you for having us and allowing us to be on your agenda. Um, my name is Wade Hathorn, and I'm on the board of directors for Clackamas Community College. And we're here tonight to give you a little presentation about some of the major changes that have gone on since we, we initiated the bond back in 2014, some of the many changes that were going on after that. Um, we're excited about many of those changes. They have, and they will make a long-term change um, to the future of the institution and uh, have really changed the character of its ability to meet its mission and its long-term function as part of that. With that, I'm going to introduce Bob Cochran, who's head of facilities, and he was involved in the planning and implementation of the, many of those projects, right? right. And have, we're getting ready to see the last bit of that done, right? Right, the paint's drying on our yeah. last projects right now. So um, thanks for having us. My, yeah, my name is Bob Cochran. My title is Dean of Campus Services, but I am head of facilities. Um, I was fortunate enough to be part of the, when the bond passed, be able to drive a bus with a lot of smart people behind me that did a lot of really fun things in the school. So we're just happy to share that with you today. Okay. Yep. Well, let's see. You just scroll down. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so this is a summary of what we did. My favorite part of this whole presentation is the blue box. Um, in 2014, we passed a $90 million bond, or actually you helped us pass a $90 million bond. From that, we got $8 million for each of our four buildings from the state. So that added 32 million onto that. And then we got 9 million in premiums from bond sales, 1.7 7 from interest, and then another 3.6 from grants. So um, we were able to parlay $90 million into 136 million and just did some really exciting things on campus. Um, we're going to talk today primarily about the first four, the buildings that we built, um, and then we'll just close up with some other um, base, touching bases on the other things. 
Now let's see how this is going. This will, oh, this is a PowerPoint, right? There's supposed to be a movie here. Oh, here it is. Nope, that's not it. You expect to get through the ad. Yeah. So bundling okay. it's <laughs> Only pay for what. And I don't think that's right. No, this is not. I don't want to see that. Either. Okay. I, did I lose the whole thing? Oh, here it is. No, I can find it. <laughs> Our first building, <laughs> um, right, is the Harmony West building um, down in our Milwaukee campus. Um, we have an existing building there called Harmony East, which is our allied health program. We built this building to complement the allied health program. So uh, we built this with classrooms and two labs um, so that the students who are taking our allied health program classes can take their their elect their um, prereqs right in that building without ever having to come up to Oregon City. In that building, we also have the um, um, criminal justice program and our small business development programs are there. Um, if you're familiar with the area, there used to be a junior high there, the Dale Lakers Junior High. We we co-owned that with OIT. We bought them out and then tore down the building for the footprint of this. It is a beautiful building. Let's say I, I enjoy this uh, with the job that I do. I utilize the, oh. the classrooms kind of on the end, the little mm. conference room. Yeah. And, yeah. And in both of those buildings. They're, it's a beautiful campus. Okay, That's we won't play any more videos. Mm. So if you put it now, it should work. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. Uh, That's your media, I guess. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so this is just time lapse. There's the, the junior high building tearing it down. And then um obviously building the building. I'm supposed to be talking while this happens, but we're out of sync right now. So anyway. Uh, so there's our Harmony West building at the Milwaukee campus. Now I'm concerned. Um can I get an escape from you, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Safe path. Oh, yeah, right. There we go. I got, I see. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's get back into this. Um, now, where can I zoom up a little bit? Anybody? Yeah, you click on slideshow. Just move that box down that shows our screen. There we go. Okay, we're. So this is the lobby of Harmony West. I'm looking into the bookstore and some of the art that we put in that was actually donated a couple years ago and we were just looking for the perfect spot for it and we found it in this building. Um, our next building, oh, it's playing, um, is the Holden Industrial Technology Center. Um, this is the center for our uh, manufacturing and our renewable energy. Um, this was completed in 2018, and we also received $4 million state match from this. Um, there are large uh, bays for manual and CNC machining with classrooms, offices, and a lot of study space for students. Um, so yeah, like I said, this has, houses our industrial programs. In the back behind that wall, there, actually there's a renewable energy field lab for our renewable energy program. And this building was named after a longtime colleague and career technical education supporter, Terry and Cheryl Holden, they have a long history and connection with the college. Cheryl grew up in Terry. Uh, Cheryl grew up in Estacate and Terry Malala, and we're honored to have them as friends of the college. I got to say, Bob, just introduce uh, or interject the fact that this, I think, is one of the most impressive facilities up at the institution. If you ever get a chance to go up to the college, you should go into this building and see the equipment that's in there. They have some unique um, training apparatus in there and 3D printers, as well as 3D manufacturing can operations that are in there that are quite impressive. And each of the machines are, they're on loan um, through an international company for basically a marketing purpose, but the students get to use them essentially. These are multi-million dollar devices that are rare in the world essentially. And there's, there's four of them on there, right? Bob? Right. Yeah. Um, this is our um, maker space named after Les Diasis. He was the founder uh, Benchmade Knives, who passed away a couple years ago, and their family wanted to memorialize him. So they uh, 
they uh, named the Lestiasis Makerspace. So what this has, this space has in it is a couple of mills, some woodworking um, equipment, a 3D printer, and uh, people can come in with their ideas and prototypes and, and, and make a dream come true. So this is open on Fridays from um, five to nine, if that's of any interest to come in and look at that or, or start playing around with wood and metal in that space, uh, we'll welcome you. Our next building is the Desjardin Hall building. This was the third one. This um, building connected to the existing Desjardin Hall and we turned this entire building into our science buildings. Our, our previous science buildings were built in the 1980s and they were very outdated and were they, they were so small that we were having large wait lists in our, our sciences. So we built this building um, to, uh, to complement that, moved all the science into the Desjardin edition and um, or just had real success with this, with this building. Again, like uh, Wade said, come on and see it. Um, we also received a grant from ODOT at Connect Oregon. We built a new transit center in the center of the campus that is adjacent to this. So now our, our TriMet and some of our local shuttles have a direct shot to stop, unload, offload, take breaks and move on. So we're really proud of this. So this is the interior of the, of the building. The left is the, the lab prep area, and the right is one of our, I think it's our biology lab. And uh, again, we think we, think we uh, rival any four-year university with this building that uh, was constructed. We did a lot of fun things, a lot of a science on display in this building. On the left, you can see we have a model of a beluga whale hanging in the, uh, in the atrium there, along with our, our bird and duck display, which was collected over the years by a, a previous professor. On the right is what we call the DNA wall. This uh, wall is the DNA of a cougar, which is our mascot. So we worked tirelessly to put together the DNA and drove the contractor nuts with, <laughs> with the, the mason who put this up, but it turned out really nice. It's just a fun thing to talk about when you're- Stay great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the biology instructor hasn't called us out on any. So. Turn into a cheetah one. Right, right. Surprise, T Rex. <laughs> so, um, in the when we built the Industrial Technology Center, um, we were able to um, move half of our move our machining equipment out of Barlow and into that. So that allowed us to double our automotive space. Um, so on one side we have automotive service, and on the other side we have auto collision. So, um, so this space. Let me get to my notes here. Um, provide students space they need for productive learning environment. They have hands-on space that mimic real shops, and this gives them the experience they need to be fully prepared to enter the workforce. Uh, today, these fill, these lead bays are filled with vehicles for our students that are working on, and many of the students have jobs secured for them before they even finish the program. There's also, a, behind this, off to the left, there's a large um, space for our high school program, uh, where students from area high schools come on campus and take classes with our instructors and in recent years, there's been a decline of secondary schools being able to offer career technical education programs. So CCC has stepped up and is partnering with area schools to give students that CTE experience. Our last, our last major building is the Wachino Welcome Center, um, which changed the way that we service our students. This building was designed as a one-stop. We call this the front door of the college. And if you've been on campus, you can see that um, it feels like a front door. You, it's the first thing you see when you come on campus. So the way this operates is previously, students would come on campus and they might have to go to three different desks, different buildings. The model now is a student comes in the front door, goes to the welcome desk, ask a question, and then staff comes down to them. So all the staff are located in this building. If you have a financial aid question, financial aid will come down, counseling, advising, registration. So we've found that um, servicing students is much easier in this. And we also found that previously students would get discouraged doing this and just leave. So we hope that um, this has been open about a year and a half that this um, this model really helps our students succeed. Um, when we were planning this, we knew we wanted to honor the indigenous tribes whose homelands the college campus resides. After much research and discussion across the college, we met with the Grand Ronde Tribal Council and proposed the name after Chief Dan Wachino, who signed the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1885, 1855 on behalf of the Clackamas people who was later and and was later removed from the Grand Ronde Reservation. The Confederated Tribes were in full support 
We were honored to have the Tribal Councilwoman Cheryl Kennedy and other distinguished members attending our grand opening in 21. So here's, um, here's some uh, photographs of inside. This is that welcome desk. So students start right here. Um, depending on the level, the complexity of their question, they can get it answered here. Or they go back to these um, small stations where they can have one-on-one -on -one conversations. And behind there, there's even um, con or small conference rooms. If the con conversation needs to be a little quieter, they can go into those. So we're feeling real successful about that. Um, second floor view looking um, towards, um, that would be towards the west. And here's just some uh, soft seating and gathering spaces within the building. Again, um, a very beautiful building. Come, come and see it. Our final project, uh, major project, was a Rook Hall renovation. When we built uh, the Wachino Welcome Center, we moved staff out of the first floor of Rook, and we transformed that into a home for our executive team, um, the foundation, and our new DEI office. So this also has a community room space that's available. We have our board meetings in there, and it, uh, we're open to other meetings and uses in that space to the public. Um, other things we did on campus, we did a lot of elevator upgrades. We totally redid our locker rooms to be in compliance with Title IX. We paid for a portion of the Myers Road extension to give the college our third our third entrance. Um, we did stormwater improvements, roof replacements, wayfinding, as you can see here, and did some campus safety and security upgrades. When we passed the bond, the, the board really wanted us to focus on two things, students and local businesses. So we put together the sailboat program and the sail portion of that is student applied and integrated learning. The board set a goal for us to have a thousand hours of student contact time on our projects, interning, visiting, shadowing, just touring. Uh, we achieved that and smashed it actually with 1973 hours of student contact time on our projects. The boat goal was the business opportunity achievement target. We wanted 10 per, they wanted 10% of our capital or of our construction costs to go to local minority uh, veteran owned, women owned emerging businesses. And we, they set a goal of 10% and we achieved a 29% goal of, of that uh, construction cost spent um, in, in those businesses. And finally, we're gonna celebrate. So on August, August 5th from 10 to three, we are gonna open up the campus with uh, family friendly um, activities, free food, games, um, uh, tractor, uh, truck, tractor display. I call it touch a truck because I'm in charge of that. So we want to get, we want to get big trucks and equipment out there for kids to play on and touch, um, entertainment and all of our new buildings will be open. So, um, please come and see us on that day. So thank you very much for your time. Did you, yeah. Did you keep it on budget? Did you, did, how did you... Yeah, you know, it, it's that's a, a good story. It's but you know, we started with 90 million and we knew we couldn't do much, right? But then when the state started matching us, we we were able to grow a little bit more and a little bit more. In our fourth building, the you know, Welcome Center, we really weren't in line for that eight million dollar bonus or bonus, <laughs> eight million dollar match, but no one else had passed a bond in the state. So our president went down and sat at the state and um and got that. 8 million for our fourth building saying that we won't apply for another one because we were out of sync, right? But there was no one else grabbing that. So that really helped. And then um, the, the some of the financial decisions the business office made with premium as an interest just kept adding up to that. So we were able to do a lot of fun things with uh, $90 million that turned into 136, right? So, yeah. Yeah, that's what this is really about. Really to say thank you to the community right. to support the bond, right? And, and all the good things that have come of it. But don't be, you know, don't don't feel that this is over there. Go up to the community college and yeah. see the changes that have been made. I think we'll be impressed. Okay. Um, the, many of these changes that are put in place are to change the opportunity for the college to to deliver non traditional curriculum programs and, and workforce training, and to match putting people to work. And that's really where the vision is really starting to change for us to move in the direction of that. And these facilities built are are to do just that. So we're very excited about the change. Wade, do you represent the zone that includes Gladstone? I do. So I represent technically zone three that encompasses all of the Oak Grove area, Gladstone, Johnson City, and then it actually has encumbered part of the, the North Clackamas County School District over on the other side of the freeway. But yeah, so I am part of the community. I live in, in uh, Oak Grove, 
Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I mean, like you made a comment about like rivaling any other big, you know, your college. And I think when I see that, just because my son's a junior right now, so we're starting that college church, right? Looking at facilities and like, like I agree with you. It's just gorgeous. It's been transformed. What you're offering and how students will feel when they come into the, you know, feeling like you want to have pride in where you're, you know, spending your time in your education and see that they would have that. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the goals you set out, I think, for the project, the, the boat and sail, that's <laughs> clever. Um, Actually, that was just made up by a student. <laughs> When we started this, she was just sitting, she was starting to intern and she was sitting behind me in a board meeting and she just kind of slipped this paper up. What about this sailboat? Why not? Right. And we've been with it for um, eight years. So. Oh, it seems very innovative. Did you guys have any other uh, community colleges, colleges you guys were um, inspired by or how did you come up? You know, yeah, I went to um, Wind Falls Community College in Idaho to look at their industrial technology building. Um, when when we were in design there, and then we took two vans full of um, of staff to um, Lynn Benton, o, U of O, and Oregon State, and did a road trip there to look at how their their um, buildings function, their registration buildings and whatnot. But yeah. I think we we beat them both. So see that that predates <laughs> me, by the way. I, know that. I started college at the in Twin Falls. On a oh, there. Oh, okay. This bike oh. I used to build around once in a while. Hmm. And who wants to take credit? That welcoming building is genius. Mm -hmm. That's like, my first year taking my daughter to college in California, we kept getting sent to different buildings. And by the day, time the day was over, we were both Exhausted. tears. Yeah, right. Yes, because then you'd stand in line and you'd wait. Mm -hmm. Then you'd go up and they say, oh, no, you're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be. Right, exactly. And we were, it was awful. Like when she was crying and I was crying, it was just way <laughs> overwhelming. So that is like genius that they come down. I mean, that's like their staff put their steps in. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's all the students are in there, yeah. especially yeah. those for, you know, attracting people into the college yeah. as well as paying you know, the students in the college. Well, yeah. you think they get frustrated and give up, like mm -hmm. you said, one of you said, like they just wouldn't come. Mm -hmm. It's very easy, especially yeah. for a teenager. Yeah. Um, and if you're familiar with the old community center, if you've been on campus, the older building, we did a, a total renovation of the inside of that and, and, and um, rebuilt ASG, our student government programs, veterans, disability resources are, are in there. So there's a continuation of that full service, right? And adjacent there, I mean, they're connected. That's amazing. Well, I went there 20 years ago and it doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It looks great. Yeah. Will you send us emails or can we get remind? I don't know. Somebody needs to remind. I want to go up on the fit. Oh, I want to remember the date. Don't advertise. I'm sure right. we'll get them. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Right. Yeah. 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 Our next discussion report B is the first reading of our textbook adoption. Yeah, I get to follow the kids in the barn. All right. um, so as you uh, may remember, last springtime, our high school, it was last year was a language arts adoption and we adopted up through uh, middle school and our high school team needed more time. They really had devoted all of their uh, team time, their department time to working with students directly. So. Um, that was an easy thing to grant, knowing that they'd be coming back in. And they have selected from the state approved list of curricula, mirrors and windows uh, for their se their sequence, uh, with particular focus on ninth and 10th grades. What company is that? Uh, mirrors and windows. Oh, that's the company? company. It's the publisher, yeah. Oh, okay. Sounds more like a... And I will bring friends. So this is a first read. Okay. Uh, and so the curricula will be available here in the boardroom between uh, now tomorrow and the uh, next board meeting for community review. Uh, and I will bring friends to talk about what the uh, what inspired the staff to um, to make these selections. That's the first. So that's making up for a deferred adoption from last spring. Uh, mathematically, a much bigger effort because it involved all of six through 12, um, but they coalesced on um, Illustrative Mathematics by Imagine Learning, the publisher was Imagine Learning from the state approved list. 
And um, the high school team came to that decision first. This is for the algebra, geometry, algebra two sequence, which is, contains most of our students at the high school level. The middle school was still debating after that between two curricula, this being one. And they decided that um, among other reasons, alignment with the high school was gonna make a lot of sense, uh, mm -hmm. especially because we have eighth graders involved in high school level courses and sixth graders involved in accelerate. So there's a whole train, right? And they, they wanted to keep that together. So again, I'll bring folks from the adoption teams, but a few things uh, worth noting as well, because mathematically, especially things get very esoteric after that um, in two different directions. So there's a new, uh, a new program in Oregon called two plus one. And this is uh, for students who are perhaps not college oriented and they want something else uh, mathematically that's going to apply to a potential uh, work, uh, future workplace. So we have selected uh, technical mathematics uh, by a CCC, it's a textbook created by a CCC professor. And that is for our new technical math class. That's a new course beginning next year and is oriented to um, Linda Prom and uh, Rachel, our, two of our, our great math teachers at the high school have designed the course based on, based on the standards, but oriented toward industry so that they'll have lots of application. Um, in, the, in the past, what we were able to offer was something called Algebra 1.5, or it, it goes euphemistically um, by different titles in different school districts, but this gives a nice sense of purpose. The other will be a financial algebra class um, for, for students who are interested in the business world. Um, and then we, we have aligned our calculus selection uh, our pre-calc is uh, investigation, investigation of Functions, 2E by David Lipman, Melanie Rasmussen. And uh, our calculus, that and our calculus text are aligned with, with, the, with the community college um, so that kids can take, uh, get credit for those courses, walk into college with some credits. And we get sent a list of this stuff. Yes. And the elementary adopted. The elementary adopted three years ago, yeah. just before COVID, yeah. right? Because we were out of we were out of cycle, and they 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 jumped ahead to to be back onto cycle going forward. I think I'm I think I'm next as well. Perfect calendar framework for the twenty four twenty five school year. Yeah, is, is it okay if I do the 23-24 uh, school year first? Well, we're doing that as an action item, the 23-24. I, I think they're, I think my understanding is they're both for um, first, first oh, reading and come back. So we're moving both of those items. Okay. Let's okay. See. Okay. So do you, do you have the calendar in front of you? Yeah. Great. Uh, the 23-24 uh, suggested uh, calendar, uh, by the committee is very similar to this year's calendar. So it, it won't look out of sync very much with this year's uh, calendar, just because that's the way that Labor Day lined up. Um, length of trimesters is something we're always trying to balance, especially for our high school staff. Make sure that uh, a section Algebra 1A when held in the fall is similarly sequenced to Algebra 1A when held in the spring, right? Um, uh, other notables, the uh, the winter winter break there was already determined because this is this comes from the framework you adopted last year, so the the edges of it were already set, and the calendar committee's focus on the next year's uh, calendar is all about the details. So where does the where do the professional development days fall? Uh, where do things like parent conferences fall? And uh, it, just making sure that we align. The, um, the we align things like progress report days. Uh, so we're not, you know, we're having as many contiguous weeks as possible. So really you, your statement was, there really isn't much that change. It's pretty much the same. It's relative to this year, relative to this year is very standard. Okay, nothing's been. And the edges have, were already set. So it really just fits in the detail, okay. fills in the detail. But any questions in between meetings, I would be uh, welcome, happy to welcome those and happy to answer those on specifics. So on this one, the, I know 
and it's probably in the email that the finals for senior or the would be before the November break. That's correct. Right? That's correct. The, the end of the trimester um, is the 20th and 21st. So the 20th is the grading day. And we're on the 23, 24th. That's correct. So the, the, the first trimester finals, uh, uh, Wednesday the 15th through Friday the 17th of November. Okay. The 24 25 uh, draft framework uh, recommendation from the committee to the board uh, does look a little bit different. And uh, in the last several years, we've fielded questions in this, in this meeting about uh, Labor Day in particular and the start of school before or after Labor Day. Um, just, I think I say it every year, but Labor Day is like the cycles of the moon, right? it travels. And um, there is ample space in the 24-25 school year so that uh, both things can be achieved to start after Labor Day, as had been the tradition uh, prior to about five years ago, and to land uh, the trimester, the trimester ending prior to Thanksgiving week, um, which is for that same, that same purpose, the reason that you asked. Uh, spring break is set uh, by, at the state level, so there's not much to do there. And then the winter, the winter holiday, you'll see um, that logically falls where it falls. So um, again, these are just the, just the edges, just the bones of uh, framework. So, and we provide this on a rolling fashion so that families can, we publish this as soon as you approve it. Uh, and then families can start to make their plans a year ahead, knowing at least the big picture of what the 24, 25 school year would look like. Is there any option to move the start into the last week of August? Uh, yes. We could we could bring we could bring a yeah this that's what this is for so we could bring you uh, something to a comparator uh, last year we did that as a matter of course because we knew there'd be questions about the Labor Day start um, the function of that if we do that the um, probably the thing you would hear from staff would be um, that we'll start a start the second trimester and then and then have a, a break uh, around Thanksgiving and then a restart. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we can bring both those to you. I mean, my main concern with that, so I had I had two concerns when I first saw this. Um, one was that final schedule. I thought that it pushed it out once they explained to me that it doesn't push out the final schedule. It's like, okay. The other issue, though, you know, across the country, most of the high schools are starting August, some of them even in July. And when we're dealing with advanced placement testing, that gives an additional two, three week advantage to anything that we're getting here. When we're starting after Labor Day, we are pushing it out even, even more. And for kids who are taking advanced placement, um, that extra week, that extra two weeks can make a very big difference in how you perform and everything that you learn because it's on a schedule, on a set schedule for the test. Um, and when you go and you take that test, the difference between a two and a three is a big deal. It's a passing versus not passing that can kind of weigh in heavily on your college prospects, on programs. If you're into certain programs, it can make a big deal. Um, and so that was my big concern is, you know, I used to always argue for, oh, let's start after Labor Day when I had kids who were younger and I didn't understand the impact that these later starts have on our high school students. And now that I do understand that, I want to, you know, advocate for um, giving them as much prep time for their advanced placement classes and for, you know, finals, which in this case is not an issue, but when it pushes that final schedule, it definitely is. And again, that that one point difference on a final between like an 89% versus a 90% and what that can do to your GPA and what that can get you into or not into, I now have learned through experience how big of a difference it can make. So my concern with this one is that we are cutting them off from an additional week of AP prep work and what that can do. Are you saying that at adding not just push, not just like pulling it back into August and then pulling it back in June, but adding a week? Their AP saying... tests 
just going earlier, so they think they so right, they would have the effect of we'd have the school would end on on June on June eleventh in that case. The VAP test is, is a set it's, date. It's, it's a set. Like, yeah. It's yeah. And so if we aren't starting till you know the first week of September, whereas other schools, you know, some schools in the country are starting way earlier in August. I know I'm not asking for that, but giving them just even an additional week to two weeks doesn't make a big difference in that buffer. Um, I remember so a couple things. Um, question first. The AP exams, what I thought I heard was that it's kind of arbitrary. Sometimes it falls really early, sometimes it's later. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong about that? Is it always know? wrong the first week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the second part is, you know, I do hear what Ginger's point is. I have a son who has to take AP. If the answer is taking him, it's a choice for taking me made. But I am a little bit concerned making a district decision on a calendar for a small group of students um, because it does only, and I know it's an impact, like I said, and I'm sitting here as a parent of a kiddo in those classes, but I think about our community and all every other child and saying, is that the right decision for everybody based on this one? It's so, just something I do want to think about. Um, because I know we've heard strongly that like Labor Day, people make lots of plans for vacation as a family. Um, holiday is one that there's a lot of tradition around. And so I just want to be mindful of that. I love, I love, I remember when we talked about this before that we wanted more input and people actually did it. It, it was the transition was okay. So that I think that's the other thing to think about is we've already transitioned to before Labor Day. So do we keep flip-flopping based on the calendar or do we just, do it earlier and you know say this is just our new normal now. So when I think there, is I mean, when, when the it doesn't hurt the other kids, whereas this could cause a difference. The small group of kids that it affects mm -hmm. will affect it in a negative way, whereas the other kids starting a week earlier doesn't affect them in a negative way. I was thinking it from the family perspective of okay. families who didn't like starting before Labor Day. That was not that it's harming the child, but it's the the traditions in the family. There's also implications on things like child care, summer camps, yeah. Have to pending, but yeah. Well the other schools in the state are starting earlier. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it would be helpful when I bring back uh so we can bring back it's I I say the royal we 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 can bring back uh a separate version of it. Uh, we can also bring you some data about uh, calendars for those school districts that have already selected, so you can kind of see the the range of what's going on. And we can take a look at, uh, I know we're not talking about the detail of it, but we can take a look at the likely uh, trimester ending points uh, that that are likely to fall. It's just a matter of counting days. Yeah. And this is also usually run through the union as well, correct? Um, through, the, through the staff, uh, I mean, the staff kind of. There's a committee. A committee. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is fairly really extensive too, right? It's like yeah. it's quite a few yeah. bodies in that committee. I can understand how getting started with a new trimester for a few days before Thanksgiving, <laughs> and then coming back to it feels could feel like a few wasted days, but, but not, not the, than like not the only days. decision maker. And glad we were getting time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. contemplate it. Okay. Any other questions or uh, for Jeremiah? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. It will be an action item then. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. That concludes our discussion reports. Um, for public participation, we didn't have any online re uh, requests for that. So we'll move on to our action items. The first one is uh, approving staff appreciation week. Oh, so, resolution terms. <laughs> right. So, whereas Gladstone School District staff mold future citizens through guidance and education, and where Gladstone School District staff encounter students of widely differing backgrounds, and whereas our country's future depends upon providing quality education to all students. 
Aurora's Gladstone School District staff spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling and coaching students, and performing community service. And whereas our community recognizes and supports the Gladstone School District staff in educating the children of this community. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Gladstone School District Board of Directors proclaims May 8th through May 12th to be Staff Appreciation Week. And be it further resolved that the Gladstone School District Board of Directors strongly encourages all members of our community to join with it in personally expressing appreciation to our staff of their dedication for their dedication and devotion to their work. Thank you, Gladstone. <laughs> and I know that there was a classified appreciation week, but in this May um, 8 through 12 is a time to recognize all staff together, classified, certified, and everybody contributes to our amazing district. So I hope they feel well appreciated. <laughs> as they do. Um, we have one more resolution, which yeah. is the Asian. We have to vote on that. Oh. Sorry, action item. I get a motion to approve the resolution. A motion to approve. Second. Thank Charlie. Yes. Tracy. Yes. Ginger. Yes. Donna. Yes. Jeremy. Yes. yes. All right. See, I'm trying to be so efficient. <laughs> All right. Approving our Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So um, May is. Uh, the Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So I have a resolution. Whereas the Gladstone School District is deeply dedicated to equity and inclusion, whereas the 2023 Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage theme is advancing leaders through opportunity, and whereas the May, month of May is the time that we as a nation recognize and celebrate the contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders to our society and collective history, and whereas the vibrant history and diverse cultures of Oregon's Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are here to be honored as a central part of our state story and shared across all the Oregon communities. And now, now therefore, be it resolved that the Gladstone School District hereby proclaims the month of May 2023 Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in the Gladstone School District. Given. Okay. I'll second. Tracy, yes. Jeremy, yes. Amy, yes. Charlie, yes. Don, yes. Jim, yes. Thank you. All right. Now we need to approve the minutes from our March 8th regular board meeting. Motion to approve. A second. Donna, yes. Ginger, yes. Charlie, yes. Stacy, yes. Tracy, yes. Jim, yes. All right, we have a uh, fire and drama club trip that uh, Sir Weir is um, uh, requesting. I'm sure he's at the uh, rehearsal tonight, so not able to be here, but we have in our packet um, a description of the trip along with an itinerary. I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, but my actually only question was the stu what students is this? Who's participating in this? It says uh, it's a drama group. Yeah, but the but says sport activity, choir, and drama. And it says ten. Yep. So, so that's, that's what I like. Question. That was my question. Was we'll bring that back to you. I'm pretty sure it's the juniors and seniors. Okay. We'll bring it back to you. Okay. Do we uh, want to approve it based or wait? Yeah, we need to get it approved. Unless that, unless that, unless that, is that is. information hinders whether you would approve it or not. Is this is a that, trip they've done before? They have done. Yeah. Okay. And they I go every, every year. year. Okay. Yeah, just from the past, I know that there were a couple times because it's Ashland, and which was an amazing experience. They were so looking for people mm -hmm. to go. It wasn't. Okay. That's what I was wondering with two to ten is that. Yeah. Does everybody go get to go that wants to go? When they did it, we'll, we'll bring it. that all back. Okay. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the trip? A motion to approve the actual trip. Second. Sally? Yes. Yes. Stacy? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. Darling? Yes. Did you? Yes. Tom? Yes. Thank you. You know what it's going to cost for kids? Um, 
Yeah. It's also it's funded by the participants and ASB funds. Combination. Yeah. Okay. okay. The next is a pre request for a license ready to mitigation for marines from the contract. So we have Macy Pingley, who's submitted a letter of resignation that will be effective June 15th. I'll make a motion for the release of the contract from AC Kingsland. We'll second. Yes. 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 Y
this assessment to be done and, and start working on grants. And... Our, the timeline includes um, facility assessments this, this summer, um, taking that data and working with the steering committee to review the information and um, work on a proposed um, master plan document for board approval. The goal um, objective there would be to bring that draft report to the board in February of 2024. Um, and then um, back again in March for approval, after which point um, we anticipate, as is, is the case with most districts, we'll have more need than we have resources. Um, so then the next step will be for the a community group to become engaged and help prioritize the, the level and the speed of the work that needs to be done, and then have the ability to explore financing um, sources in the months to follow that in this basically spring and summer of 24. Do you see the the grant funding from the state and maybe the feds for the seismic stuff to cover the costs, the complete cost of seismic upgrades, or is that something that the school district would have to pitch in for? So usually, um, what happens is when we apply for the grant, we, we're picking a project that we believe we can we can cover between the grant and local resources. Okay. Um, and so there will be, in this proposal at option three, we would apply, we would have at least two different projects that we'll be ready to apply for. Um, and then this, the seismic uh, rehabilitation grants do not require a district match. So it's not at 80, 20 or 90, 10. Um, but if the scope of the project exceeds um, what the grant is able to offer, then we would have to have that discussion as to whether that's something that we could cover the additional amount of. And if we had two different application options and one was way out of sight price range for us to, to apply for and cover match, then we would steer towards something that, that is something that the district could afford as a matter of course. And they'll, those seismic grants, they give us, um, I believe it's two years to get it from, from award to completion. Are there, are there any downfalls of looking at a seismic? Like now you know, so now you have to. <laughs> um, certainly that we, we want to know so that we can mitigate in any way that we can. Um, and uh, ideally we would be, have, be able to access capital improvement monies through the seismic rehabilitation grant to mitigate some of those. I, I can't um, I don't believe that there's a district in the state that if we assessed all of the size of needs that we wouldn't find something that we couldn't afford to do right away. But certainly knowing and being able to mitigate in the ways that we, we can um, are, are, is our best effort. Not doing anything and not knowing and not being prepared is certainly not an option either. And I guess my final question would be, did, if this is a district-wide plan, right? All yes. Buildings, all all facilities, facilities. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, well, Charlie and I sat in on the interviews with the companies and um, something I was impressed with them in terms of their presentation and what they were offering in terms of what we were approving here. It was impressive what they uh, the experience and the skill set and the way they're able to provide us an assessment. I'm excited to get the information. Yeah, and then most of the players involved were, have had previous history in the district and some of the work, including some of the stuff involving previous facilities audits and previous bond. So there's like a it's, it's a familiarity that means that like we're gonna get we're gonna maximize our, our investment in this. If you know this what was the pushing point for you for this particular company over the other ones looking at government contracts that have done that? <laughs> they I mean you know it was it was a robust proposal compared to the other two. They had a familiarity with their district which was you know very very valuable um no it, it felt very like i don't know frank was the standout for me you know it was pretty definitive like they had the best presentation they had the most authority they had the most comprehensive they had the most context for everybody so um really they they're also really heavily focused on um um equity of voice and making sure that our community are heard and that they're gathering information i think in a way that's like in addition to just what you got to do with the hard things, right? Seismic information, all of that is really getting the input from all the stakeholders. We feel like we're reaching out and getting a comprehensive picture of what yeah. is the hard needs. Staff, students, 
community. Yeah, they were they were really they were very emphatic about drilling down and it being a collaborative transparent process. Yeah. You know, which was which was very you know beneficial for us because again, it's like we're talking about a lot of money spent, a lot of resources, but also means that like um high opportunity for this to be a transformative thing for, for this community too. I feel really confident. Like I said, I I was glad to see this is the direction we're going because I really want the most information to feel for our community and making big choices. But, well, first of all, knowing what our needs are and going from there. We have that need about one to win was the last facilities review. That was a story. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Make a motion. Make a motion to approve this. Just with the expenditure <laughs> for the conference. Okay, so we need on that bottom. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Donna. Yes. 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 All right. Um. <laughs> All right, moving on to superintendent's report. Um, it's hard to believe that we are uh, reporting on the month ending March uh, 31 of 2023, 75% of the way through our, our budget year. I, I know I, I'm with you, I, it's hard to believe. Uh, but the work that's happening behind the scenes right now with budget development for next year kind of reminds me that this is where we are we're at the end of March. Um, highlights for this particular time uh, continuing to tighten up um, um, projections um, across all funds and specifically in the general fund. Um, we've, we've run through one more cycle of payroll. I've met with all of the uh, department leaders and building leaders to talk through what their spending plan was for the rest of this year as well as needs rolling into next year and um, um, updating the uh, ending fund balance projection to be 4.3 million um, after all of that work that's happened. And that's, uh, I still feel um, comfortable that that's a, um, uh, a number that we'll, we'll potentially improve upon. But at this point in time, based on those reviews, that's kind of where we're landing for as we close out March. Um, so that does, um, uh, put us in a position that's better than what we were what we budgeted. Um, it allows us not only that, but we absorb the cost increases that occurred as a, as a result of the labor contracts that were adopted or approved after the budget adoption. So not only did we spend down less than what we budgeted, but we did so and absorb those additional labor costs. So that's a great position for us to be in as a district. Um, and that's uh, and the the changes in the um, labor costs is going to necessitate, as I've been telling you all along, um, an appropriations request that'll come back to the board at this point, either um, at the May meeting or at the June meeting. I kind of want to see what happens with the May reconciliation from the state school fund mm -hmm. um, and what that what that does for us in terms of our ability to essentially increase potentially revenue and then um, and, and make those adjustments in the budget. In any case, we will not be coming back to you and asking for us or asking for uh, permission to use contingency. We will be adjusting the budget from within the appropriations. Mm -hmm. It's just that our instructional function is going to get uncomfortably close to that budget total. Okay. Um, and so I wanna make sure that we're in a position of not putting us over expenditures for our appropriations mm -hmm. levels for the end of the school year. Um, and then grants we've claimed through um, second quarter, third quarter is happening now. And so um, no major changes there in terms of what we've been projecting all along. And we, this is our uh, next to last year for ESSER. And so um, bulk of that, the remaining funds are being spent this year with some carry forward that'll come to you in the budget for, for next year. Any questions? I just want to say I love this chart. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was I your guys' it. idea. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, it's just helpful to see it visually and over time. Uh, question is a little bit off topic, but audit or about an audit committee or anything like that. What's the we are uh, awaiting their response for an opportunity to meet audit committee at this point. Okay. Yeah. 
weren't ready. They weren't ready for, for that to be able to, we don't, we want to have the audit committee meeting first before we bring the document to the board. So continuing to work with, so, with them. And <laughs> yes, soon. I, I would expect certainly you would have not a meeting for the May board. Okay. Perfect. And we are scheduled for on-site audit for this fiscal year in the middle of May already. So we need to get that caught up with them. So <laughs> <laughs> for the next ones ready to get underway. We did a three new time. Three year. Three year. Three year. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Aubrey, come on up. Yes. We're going to talk to you about the website and the website development. Uh, so Aubrey, our technology director, is here, and uh, she will give you some um, oversight. Can I introduce you quickly? Sure. Right. Those of you who have not met Aubrey, she uh, has hit the ground running. And not only that, but she got handed a pretty big project right away. I said, uh, she likes to tell people I met her and said, you want to build a website? <laughs> That's about how it went. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Aubrey Jarvis. I'm the tech support supervisor. Uh, I was hired back in December. Uh, I come here from Gaston School District. Um, and I am so excited about this project. Uh, so upon my hiring, um, a key stakeholder shared with me that our um, website needed an important update. Um, currently, our website, I'm sure you all are familiar with it, looks like this. Um, you know, it's not the, the worst, um, but currently we are self-hosting, um, which takes a lot of time, money, and resources. Um, it's maintained only by a few people. Uh, it's also not entirely ADA compliant. Um, it's not standardized between schools. Um, it's not always updated or relevant. And these are key uh, feedbacks that I've heard from community members, staff, um, and parents. So it was apparent that we needed a new website that was hosted offsite in the cloud secure so that we don't have to pay time or resources to maintain it. Um, we want staff members to be able to have a say in what goes in there so that it is relevant and up to date. Um, we want it enticing to current and prospective stakeholders, uh, and we want it to be ADA compliant for all users in our district. You know, can you just expound a little bit on the ADA compliance and what way it's not right now? Absolutely. So ADA is a American with Disabilities Act. Um, and that is being transferred to the, the digital sphere, right? Um, so when mostly when we think of ADA, uh, we're thinking about people that um, can't see, can't see very well, can't hear, can't hear very well, um, need to use just a keyboard or just a mouse, um, et cetera. So right now there are some issues with contrast um, our text, you know, our green text on a white background that sometimes is hard to see. Um, it's our site is not easily navigable um, with just a keyboard. So if somebody could not use a mouse, um, they they can't navigate very well. Um, there isn't anything built in for translation options mm -hmm. um, or any kind of speech to text. Um, Size as well yeah yes um is there anything else you can think of those are the really big ones mm -hmm. there are uh key standards laid out uh it, to my knowledge it's called WCAG. it's like the website something okay. accessibility <laughs> guidelines that are lined out by uh the federal government that say these are the standards we're looking for um and that's the standard that we would like to meet um, so continuing, um, I partnered with Assistant Superintendent Jeremiah, uh, and we launched an RFP process. We were seeking a vendor that understood the needs of K-12 school districts and had past experience working with them. Uh, we wanted the vendor, uh, regularly, that regularly met, uh, ADA accessibility regulations, um, we also understood how our audience engages with our website now. Not many people are accessing it via desktop anymore. 
um, students, staff, and parents are accessing it on their phones. So we wanted a vendor that had a mobile first approach. Um, and we wanted the vendor to also be transparent and inclusive of all upfront and continuing costs. We received four total responses to our RFP. Two of these bidders specialized in K-12 website design. The other two were geared towards more commercial or large business. Um, we awarded one contract to a vendor who met and heard all of our needs. We chose Aptigy, who has also designed websites for Fulton School District, Umatilla School District, and the Intermountain ESD. Um, so far, they've provided excellent mock-ups um, um, of both our website and its partner app. Maybe. So there's a, and this is just an example um, of the website and the app uh, that will go with it. Um, and they are mirrored and that will be available on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Um, and so far, I'm really impressed. Um, everything within it is on guardrails, so we can't put anything that's not ADA accessible on there. Uh, I've looked at Colton and Umatilla's website, and they're really nice, really accessible, um, very relevant, very shiny and appealing. Um, but we can access, uh, you know, it's very navigable that we can access whatever we're looking for. Because um, with our current website, that doesn't always feel so easy. Um, their timeline is very generous. They have stated that other school districts uh, had a turnover within 60 to 90 days. We were asking uh, for a website by July 1st. Um, and they have a very open timeline. I believe something similar like this has been included in the board packet. Uh, we are on track to go live with our new website by July 1st, a good time uh, for, you know, in between in the summer, we can have ample communication with parents and students, especially if we want to have something ready to go before school starts that could be an easy place to go. Um, we are currently in the design stage right there in March, April. Yes. Um, we have gathered important feedback from staff that are on our design committee. Some of those staff members come from different positions in different buildings. Um, some of them are also parents. So they have a lot of really good feedback for what they want to see in the website. Like last name of teacher alphabetically <laughs> instead of first name. Yeah. Oh. It's my first name. Like, when, yeah. when was our original current website built? Funny. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't seem like so long ago, but when you think about it, it is. Think about it. Did you? Yeah. Technology time frame. Exactly. A lot of technology. The refreshment rate for a lot of things is between three and four years. So it's definitely time. I think. Um, the first two years of this project have been paid for with a grant made available by Clackamas ESD. Um, so to my knowledge, it will not impact general fund. Uh, we are excited to have a front facing tool that different members of our community can access. I really hope that it's exciting and something that can bring a point of pride to parents, students and staff members at Gladstone School District. Will we be replacing things like parent view and, and institutions or is this like it's just bootstrapped into it will be strapped in. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Uh, right. Yes, we will not be changing key features like Synergy, Parent View, um, things like that. This is just the, the front facing kind of navigability of the website that includes information about schools, academics, um, teachers, events. Is the is the is the mobile version of the site is that like built through like a proprietary app that a parent would download, or is it just like a mobile fed version of you just go to the URL on a browser? Both. 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 Cool. Yeah. The one really nice thing I like about the app is that it enables push notifications. So if I were to have a student in the district, I could get push notifications on my phone if you know we're closed early or what have you. But then also if I'm only a parent at say John Wetton and I only wanted notifications from John Wetton, then that's also a possibility. Did you look at uh, any of the potential safety features like when like the lockdown 
push notifications because every kid in the high school is going to have to go off at that moment in time or go in a classroom, that kind of stuff. Is this app able to do that? Yes. Yes. It could do uh, emergency notifications as well. Does it follow though our protocols? So we have we have an option. We have, we would we haven't made a decision yet on whether to replace our current messaging system, but that we do have an an option that we're deferring that decision till later. We're comfortable with our current uh, mess, mess, you know, emergency messaging yeah. uh, platform. If we ever decide to do that, uh, we'll do it with ample time to field test it heavily. And then the other question I would ask is, does it allow you to pinpoint specific geofence to do these notifications? And you don't need kids in middle school having the same mm -hmm. notifications that the kids in high school would have. Mm -hmm. uh, vice versa, if there was an intruder in a building, that kind of thing. The high school wouldn't need to know if it was here at Donwell. For sure. Um, it's user-based. So as a user who downloads the app, I get to pick if I want those notifications from which schools. If I want notifications from all the schools, I can have that. Um, but if I want to opt out of certain buildings, I can. We do have the option to push globally, though, in that case. Can we control that on our side of it so that if you're a middle schooler, you're not getting those that particular safety notification from the high school? Because I think if you're having an emergency at a high school and you send all those messages here, too, you're just going to send two schools into a, into a spin that you wouldn't need to do that. Yes, we can also do that. I'm really uh, excited about the way they do content sharing. Uh, we can make it global. We can attach it to, you know, Facebook, Twitter, SMS, email, so that we can send it as one, or I can send it to everybody in John Wetton or everybody at Walter L. Craxberger. Um, so uh, the people, uh, staff members who push those messages get to decide where they go. The other thing is cost. What is the what is the cost? I know it granted for the first two years, but and do we have a cost analysis? What it costs us now to have people do it versus what it's going to cost in two years to yes. have them do? It? They've given us a yeah. Uh, that's a. <laughs> um, I they've given us a really good rate, especially compared to the other bidders that I presented. Uh, I also have experience with some of the other bidders at my last district and was really satisfied. Uh, we're going to be paying $8,000 annually compared to twenty dollars or $40,000 from other bidders. And I believe an additional $2,000 upfront cost. Does that sound right? Uh, it's higher than that. So the build, the build costs, the, the total two-year package for uh, the build. So the build is a cost and then the annual fee. So the total is about $27,000. No, no, I'm questioning my... Pardon? Yeah. Correct. It matches. It matches the amount uh, flowing through us through Clackamas ESD. Will there be an opportunity after two years for additional grants? We just wait and see. Oh, we hope so. Yeah. And what? What in that grant? What would be the cost? That eight thousand dollar annual. Eight thousand dollars annual. Okay. All right. And is that based on user or is that just a flat fee? We can put, you know, five thousand people on it. It doesn't matter, or is it based on a number of users? Not based on a number of users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's, uh, it's largely for hosting, for training. So we have on-demand training whenever we desire. Uh, we also have redesign options, so we can completely rebuild the website once a year, wow. which we don't aim to do. Uh, yeah. But we but we can we can completely overhaul the website up but to one time annual. To go through this process again. No. If, and if we became dissatisfied with this vendor. We would port, we would choose a different vendor and we would port all the material over to that vendor. Why was there, I mean, that's a huge price difference. And if two are coming in at, at one kind of ballpark and then this other one's way over here, is, are they not offering the same things or are they offering the same things and really just charging very different? Um, in my opinion, um, some of them, Kind of nickel and dime they give you certain packages and say this is a basic package this is a you know good better best 
And some of those best packages uh, can get really expensive. They also have a lot of the included stuff. Um, for example, the content managing and sharing that is with this vendor would not be included if we went through a different vendor. Um, and like I said, some of the other vendors were geared towards more um, like small or large business business and more commercial. Um, so some of their hosting, you know, they got the fancy graphics and um, they weren't bad websites, but they weren't geared toward K-12. And um, we really wanted a vendor that had that in mind. So we handed her a, a very aggressive timeline and uh, just can imagine that you are all as impressed as I have been with Aubrey's ability to pick up, start to understand the context of the district and lead a project. So that's probably the most impressive side is what you won't see, the way she facilitates groups of staff. Uh, we're meeting next week with administrators um, and really open-ended, very, uh, very willing to say, I don't know, let me get back to you and a lot of follow through. Giving them giving them feedback right away, and Thank she you. started in December. Yeah, this is impressive. Thank you. I'm very excited to see the launch of it. Thank you. Thank you. Work. I'm really excited to be here. So are you are you guys meeting on the safety side of this later on? Is it something you could, you could talk about messaging on the safety end of like stuff? Yeah, we'll be comparing what they offer to what we already have and do a cost benefit analysis. But that that didn't preclude us from getting out and going. I just see the benefit in it. Mm -hmm. We're able to message the same thing to every single student out of school. That is a huge benefit. And to clarify, we already have that tool. Um, we're just deciding if we want to pay this vendor or the vendor that we are. What does that tool look like to the students? Push notification <clears throat> to all of them at one time. Do you not get it? Actually, School Messenger right now communicates mainly with families, not with students. Um, I'm, if, we, if we chose to put those phone numbers in, yeah. we could do that. But it's a question of does every child have a phone and is that age appropriate? Sure. And the levels, et cetera. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking if you're talking about safety protocols for intruders in the building, you know, that kind of stuff where we need to lock our doors, you need to go in classrooms. If you need to tell students where they need to go, I I, I don't care if it's age appropriate or not. You just need to tell them where they where to go and what, what to do. Uh, it's an unfortunate reality we live in. Um, but if we can't do that now, I would suggest that we make sure that we're able to do that in the future. Um, if we don't want to turn it on, I would have a question with that. But um, so I hear that, that can, that's a great, I had no idea that a website could go to this feature. So like, this is fascinating, but it sounds like it's an additional cost to turn that. It is, it would, but it would replace an existing cost. So, okay. so we just have to analyze, we're yeah. bringing on a new communications person because Leslie is uh, moving on to, to better things. So we want that person involved in that communications decision. And we want, and we knew this was an aggressive timeline. We didn't want to hold it up with that and, decision. And just to clarify, I'm assuming the school messenger is messages through like an SMS thing and even if we put that as part of like the website stuff it would still just link to an SMS message to the board. It it gives you the choice of auto dial phone, email, SMS, or social media, which I have not used. Yeah. You don't always want those kind of you know emergency messaging to yeah. go on social. But I'm not but these tools are not necessarily connected to like our school website. It's just you know no yeah. no I, I'm just thinking <laughs> if it's app based and the kids have the app, yeah. you'd be able to communicate through an app with those phones, right? Uh, I looked at this for my job and they were there's companies out there that you can say, I want this, all the people in this area with a cell phone to get that message, right? And I'm just wondering if we have that ability to turn that on because I see the, the future in that and I see the potential um, use of that. So like if they're on a campus, it's going to go to everyone who's present on that campus with yeah. the app. Yeah, because you can geofence and send a message sent to these people. We'll do some more research. Yeah. I think that's There's good. Some cool things that could happen. It's, it's, it's like, like, it's like the Amber Alert when you see it's it. It's very similar to that. Yeah. Thanks, Vito. Thanks for Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, in the work packet, you have the uh, AR is an information item. 
related to discrimination procedure. Uh, I just had uh, on step three, the last, literally the last line, it has a, a that looks like it's been changed from 110. So this, <laughs> I, I think it actually had been 10 and it's now 30. And it's instead in lieu of- um, Oh, in I lieu of the one one, is, so it's actually the three and the zero. In lieu of this meeting, okay. in lieu of a meeting at which the person is present, this would be uh, upon receipt of the appeal by the board. Mm -hmm. This is not something that we're bringing to you just to clarify. This is not something we're bringing to you out of the blue. This is a, a on cycle recommendation uh, revision of the policy by OSBA. So this is has not been touched by us yet. It's really from OSBA to you. For and you only change the days, number of days. Correct. Um, I did, I needed a little clarification. Was it thirty days for each step, or thirty days from the initial complaint? No. Each step was 30 days. No. It says will not be longer than 30 days from the date of submission of the complaint at any step. So, I mean, 30, you have 30 days for each step. Then it says 90 days total. Mm -hmm. Oh, 90 days total. So the, the timelines the timelines associated with the above steps, the, the traditional steps, remain as they were. Uh, this just extends the the the, the step three time. You know, you've had an opportunity to work with some of the complaint process. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. This, this gets more. This gets more. Okay. I just wanted to understand that a little yeah. bit. Thirty days yeah. at each step, but actually. Nine. Nine. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh, there's a handful of uh, uh, personnel. Um, one that you'll probably be very interested in is our um, board secretary and assistant <laughs> board. Fine. <laughs> and we have, <laughs> we have, well, she's she's been notified that she cannot leave until we have a suitable replacement. Suitable replacement, uh, which uh, may not be possible. But, oh, I don't know if going to ever be <laughs> <laughs> We are taking applications oh, okay. down, and uh, we uh, it, it closes on Friday. And um, as of earlier today, we have seventeen applicants. Mm -hmm. Great. And then legislative update. I, I'm only going to give you one. That there are more bills at the legislature now than I can recall any legislative session having. But the one I want to give has to do with funding for schools. Um, and I shared with you earlier that uh, uh, the co-chair's budget was um, looking like it was going to be problematic, um, that it might actually come in at less than $9.9 billion. I will tell you, it's still problematic, uh, but they did, come, they did come in at $9.9. Um, so this biennium's budget, 21-23 budget, is $9.3 billion. That money, the, there's $8.95 billion that comes from state resources. So a lottery, state income tax, those types of things. So that's state resources. To get to 9.3, they used 350 million in the last biennium of corporate kicker money to bring it to 9.3. Okay, I've talked to you about that the corporate kicker is larger um, in this next biennium than it's ever been. $1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. What the co-chairs did was they allocated that entire $1.5 billion to the state school support fund to bring it to $9.9 billion because they reduced the other sources of revenue to schools down to $8.4 billion from $8.95 billion. Okay? So... Um, this, in, in my opinion, this is going to create an enormous problem in the 25-27 by because the new start point for, for what I will call the more secure funding is 8.4 when it was 8.95 now. And, um, and I believe within the governor's budget, 
I believe the governor's budget, it was significantly more than 8.95. Um, so it's the worst fear of K through 12 people that the corporate kicker is a means to reallocate school district K-12 funding to other programs in the state, uh, which is exactly what's happening. So um, the, there's, that's, that's, a, that's a done deal though. That is not gonna be changed through this process. Um, that's one part of this that's a done deal. There's um, still a billion dollars. So they're out of money. They've allocated all the money that they know they're gonna have. There's still a billion dollars of requests that have come in from all different agencies and departments <laughs> to the legislature, and there's no source of money for that billion dollars. So right now it's no to everything in addition to, and they're waiting on the May 17th revenue forecast to see if that provides any mobility in the budget or not. So um, that's why I'm telling you it's, it's a yes, no answer. When you when you say, did, did schools get the 9.9? .9? Yes, but no. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, I think that's the, my view of the world, that's a, that's a really, really big problem. Really big problem. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's all I have. You do, it's a done deal. It, uh, that's it. It's the, they have not voted and approved it because they won't do that until after the next revenue forecast comes in. And if the next revenue forecast would come in with another $600 million that would be available or another $300 million of corporate kicker that would become available, then there's the possibility that there could be a little bit of movement in some of the, some of the numbers. But um, we're basing our budget on 9.9. .9. Um, other school districts are basing their budget on 10.2, 10.3. And uh, they're building their budgets on the higher number. What, what they say is we're not letting the legislature off the hook. So I don't know what their backup plan is. It's a yeah. it goal is that the equivalent percent of budgetary equivalent playing chicken with their fundraising. Yeah, it's gonna that's I think that's a tough game of chicken, quite frankly. Yeah. I think that I'd much rather do what we're doing and then if more money comes in, then it puts us in a little better position. Yeah. Uh, going forward. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, move on to our presentations and suggestions from board members. So um, we'll have our our board work session on April 26th. Um, and then our next one is in May. And I sent you guys an email that we will have our board. We would hope to do our board self-evaluation in April, but Janet wasn't available. So we're doing it in May and flip-flopping. Um, so I sent an email with the information and the timeline of how that would <laughs> We'll get the the first thing you're going to get is the link to the survey to do on May 5th. What's great about our timeline is that we're going to get the um, full report from our survey before we have our work session. So you'll have an opportunity to review it and start like making notes and observations before um, the May work set before our work session. Um, and then she'll help facilitate a discussion around it and setting some goals for ourselves. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so our April uh, work session, at this point, um, we I have drafted that we do the superintendent evaluation because we flip-flop, we were gonna do that in May. Um, we did, uh, it's time to do another attendance report, that's been a focus. So we can um, put that in there as well as uh, check in on the continuous improvement plan. Um, and then the day, two days before that, um, there's going to be some middle school visits. Um, so not a presentation, but if there's any information to share, I'd ask Bob about how the middle school visits went on doing, because we're launching into the middle school study. Um, and then I wondered, Charlie and Donna, if you had anything you guys wanted to share from the National School Board Conference and what you learned. So. Nothing that you'd have to prepare, but if you had some things you wanted to share with us, that would maybe be a good time to do that. There, Unless you're sharing tonight. At, at, at April. At the April one. Uh -huh. Up to you. Yeah. I, we can, it's always good to hear yeah, that I can sit out the highlights. And then, yeah. You can talk about it tonight, too, if you wanted to, but if there were specific things you wanted to bring up to the board. 
Um, I just wanted to remind folks about our May 18th casino night that um, supports our Gladstone Education Foundation, as well as the auction, which I know that's launching too, which is a several day window. Can you tell me again the dates of the auction? Leslie, help me out. So the, the auction is May 13th. Okay. So Saturday, May 13th. Um, excuse me, the dinner and casino night is Saturday, May 13th. Oh, I, I know. I just took the week without my glasses. Yeah, I didn't have my night at eight. So yeah, Saturday, May 13th is dinner and yes. casino night. Yep. And then the actual auction is still all going to be done online. So it's all virtual, including the raffle and the purchase the raffle tickets. Um, that opens on May 7th. Okay. And bidding will go through May 14th. Right. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> um does Trace, this, what is this fund? Is this the Education Foundation. The Education Foundation is our annual auction, and we're coming back together to do, it's kind of, we're calling it a hybrid, but it's the first get together since COVID where we're actually having Peter, uh, people invited to a dinner and we're doing a casino night with that. And the band will be playing because yes. the paddle raises mm -hmm. for the. Yep. The special band. appeal is going to be to um, provide funds for the. Uh, instrumental music program in the school. So Leslie has been working herself and with a student who is doing some promotional videos. Um, Seth will be there, but yeah, the jazz band will be playing for the first hour when people are registering. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. Um, let's see. So and, uh, Tracy's putting about has put the, together a basket for us um, to donate, and so um, she's collecting money from that for board members. If you haven't thought to her yet, and then Tracy, do you want to talk about? Well, we talked. They talked. Stacy and I and Bob were talking about. You know, I haven't even been to one of these yet because of COVID and the first couple of signings. But the tickets for the auction are I think it's a hundred dollars and it's dollars for the dinner. So if anybody wants to go in, I'm going to get a ticket. If you wanted to put together a table or any school weather rooms that wanted to go and sit together at that. Um, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, and then along with that, so every year, if you're new, the board puts together a basket for auction. And then Tammy does a beautiful job of making it look really pretty and putting it on the website. And then she names it something fabulous. Um, so um, two years ago, we did like backyard fun. Peter and I did last year, kind of a family thing. And this year, I pulled, I sent out a couple emails, and then I just went for it, and I've already shopped, and I already bought everything. Yeah. Um, and I told her to go for it. Yeah, so, so I was like, okay, I'm just like, I need, you know, state testing time of my school, and we forecasting our graduations, I'm like, we just got to get this done. So everything's been purchased, I can tell you what it is, or I can email you, I don't know if you want to be a surprise or not, but um, I'm excited about it. So typically, we just do $30 per board member, which comes out to a budget of 210. Um, I spent 218, uh, but I'll take the extra $8. <laughs> so at any time, if you want to like, you know, cash or I have a Venmo or a check or, you know, no rush, but um, I just pay, put it on my visa for now and, and we're, we're good to go. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. And in the future, if anybody else wants to do it, I don't want to step on any toes. I just... You know, I asked Stacey because the board chair is usually in the charge of it. And I asked like, Stacey, and she's like, <laughs> so, and we greatly appreciate it. So, thank you. And let me know, Tammy, because I have to, I'm waiting for one more thing to come in the mail. Otherwise, I have to, whenever you want it, I can, unless it's a burden to keep it. I, I'm actually, I'm creating space downstairs because I have several people that want to bring large items, and we'll have a board meeting in here again. Right before the auction, so okay. I'll and let you I didn't know. know this, but ticket sales are happening now for the. Uh, we just went live. Yes, yes. Okay. actually, okay. Friday the links went live. But yeah, okay. I'm working out today from okay. uh, Leslie. We can send it directly to the board. Okay, uh, it's in the news blast. It's in the, the news blast that went out today. Okay. 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 okay, so if you do want to like sit together, you can let me know. You can register individually on the website. But yeah, it's a hundred dollars that includes sit down dinner at the Monarch. So it's by Del Fuego. And I actually went last night because I thought a better sample of what we're having. My <laughs> husband and I went to get there. It's lovely. It's lovely. Um, and then it also includes um, $20 in script um, for the casino night. And then people can do revise and stuff the night if. So. Mm -hmm.
All right. Well, let's. Did you have anything else? We'll uh, no. Yeah. Uh, I just had a question. Um, we're going to talk about attendance again, correct? <laughs> At the April meeting. At the April meeting. Okay. I had asked a couple of months ago, we were talking about uh, students that were uh, English with the second language. <laughs> and we were talking about grades and how they, how that all fit in. Um, I ne don't think I ever got an answer to that question. We'll bring it to you. Thanks. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. That's all I have. Um, let's see. So close closet every Saturday from uh, 10 to 12. Um, we have all sorts of clothing for kids birth through 18. Um, and then this Sunday, Cracksburger, um, at Cracksburger, we are doing a can and bottle bit have any cans or bottles, bring them down here to Craftsburger on Sunday from uh, 12 to 3. We are collecting um, all of the proceeds from that will go towards our eighth grade. I'm not allowed to call it graduation, but whatever we want to call it. Promotion, party, recognition. Um, they're going to Oaks Park and um, get a sweatshirt, a class of uh, 2027 sweatshirt and um, do a little bit of a, like a recognition after the graduation. That's what we're raising money for. So the cans will definitely help towards that. Um, and let's see, what was the other? I think that's it. <laughs> Um, I don't have anything. I mean, like, I got a cap again. I'm excited for graduation. <laughs> I can't believe it's almost the end of the academic year. It's covered. All fast it's gone. Uh, I just wanted to thank the uh, East Coast trip students for coming in and talking and for also representing uh, our school district in such a phenomenal way. So we have we have wonderful kids and staff in our district. Um, and I think that's about it. We'll wait and talk about the NSB. Okay, sounds good. All right, meeting is oh, sorry. Oh, eight o'clock on the dot. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fast. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.